We're live. We're back. I'm Jay Fidel. Uh, this is Community Matters, our regular show that deals with events and organizations that serve the community and the common good. Today we're going to cover youth outreach, finding a, a roof for homeless youth. Critical. How do they do that? Our special guests for this discussion are Martin Rabet, President of the Youth Outreach Board, and Jane Alexander of Friends of Youth Outreach. YO is a drop-in center for homeless youth and children in Waikiki. It is joining forces with Home Aid on Christmas Eve this weekend to give home, homeless youth a roof over their heads for Christmas. YO works to raise public awareness and also to raise money to build a center where youth can sleep safely at night. It's a major fundraiser, a sock, its major fundraiser is a sock hop at Stan Sheriff Center, and that's scheduled for this coming April 8th. But we'll hear more about that in a minute from our guests, Martin Rabet and Jane Alexander. Welcome to the show, Martin and Jane. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Everybody. Thank you. So what's, tell me, somebody tell me, what is a drop-in center? The center in Waikiki is a, it's open four days a week because that's as much funding as it receives from Waikiki Health and Halekipa, the two organizations that run this uh, show. And it's only open for the kids from three to six, where they can come in and get a hot meal, um, hot shower, they can get their GED, they can get medical attention, but it's also a safe place for them to be. Because most of these kids have run away from home for various <clears throat> reasons, either they're sexually abused, or their parents are on drugs, they're kicked out because they're gay or transgender. Um, but this little drop-in center in Waikiki is a safe place for them to be, and they get donated clothes so they can come in and, and uh, get new clothes when they want. They can also do their laundry, which is important. And they have lockers, a place to stash their stuff. With their own lock, their own control of the space. Yeah. Well, the, the lock is under the control of the, um, of, of the Yo supervisors, but they have a place to put their things in mm -hmm. and feel safe. Mm -hmm. So what, what, um, what age group are we talking about? Well, there are babies of 14, 15 year old mothers all the way up to 21. Wow. Yeah. Does the baby of a 14 year old or 15 year old mother come with the mother? Oh, yeah. So it's uh, okay. And, use, and use the aunties is, and uncles yeah. who are kids as well. Yeah. And the siblings of these mothers, um, they all take care of each other. It's a clan. And this Yo House is a safe place for them to be together. I love the term Yo House. That's mm -hmm. got all kinds of secondary meaning, yeah. They gave the, the, uh, the organization the name. The kids did. Oh, did they really? Yes. Good, good for it was them. Called good youth for you outreach. for being sensitive to that. Yeah. yeah, it was called Youth Outreach, and they, they named it Yo. Perfect, yeah. perfect. So um, I guess, you know, I'm wondering why Waikiki? Waikiki is a neighborhood all of itself. Now, we, we don't want them on the street for a number of reasons in Waikiki, partly because Waikiki is the engine of our economy, and it's, uh, it's tawdry to have the tourists look, look on homeless people all day. That doesn't work. But why Waikiki? Are these kids living in Waikiki? Would they otherwise be on Kuhio Avenue? They are living in Waikiki, but they, they feel comfortable there. They can fit in in Waikiki. They don't look homeless because of the donated clothing and backpacks, but they feel safe there. And unfortunately, at night, sometimes they have to just walk at night because they can't sleep on the beach until daytime. And one of the kids wrote a story of a class there weekly that I have them help them to teach their stories. And one wrote about one night he was awakened by police officers three times because he kept moving. And so he just walked at night and then he slept during the day on the beach where he could. But that meant he couldn't go to school. Did he have a family? No. So can a, can a, I don't know how this works. Can a kid who doesn't have a family walk into a school and get signed up? There are, um, Carla Hauser, who, who runs the Yo House from the Waikiki Health portion, helps them get their IDs, documents, so that they can enter a school. Um, and also, if there are parents anywhere or guardians anywhere, she gets their permission. But it's often difficult to get that because they're often on drugs. And even 
even uh, without permission, uh, she can get them into school? She, she has been able to, yes. Mm, okay, it doesn't sound easy, actually. No, no. it's not. <laughs> because what happens is we have Child Protective Services to come in to get the kids under 18, yeah. and they are supposed to take them back to the parents who might be abusing them, so the kids will just run away again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And sometimes the police just bring them directly to Yo, knowing that they'll be safe there. Where's the where's the the border between this kind of activity, you know, sleeping during the day and walking the streets at night? Between that and and prostitution on Cujo Avenue, is that are they linked? Um, is there some kind of connection there? We'd like to think that it, there isn't a connection, but unfortunately, there often is because the kids then find a place where they can sleep and they also get some money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, young kids too. I know. Oh yes. Very young yes, kids. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. these. This is Christmas now. You're. You're. Of course, your fundraiser is, is on April eighth, but you're doing this program on Christmas Eve that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if you could describe to me the program. Um, how does it work? How do you arrange it and attract you know, the homeless kids to be there? How do you support it? What do you expect from it? Well, last year, um, Nani Medeiros, who runs Homemade Hawaii here, was the, she spearheaded the whole thing, and we did it at um, the Aloha Tower um, in the student lounge of the Hawaii Pacific University there. And we told the kids they'd have a place to sleep with a roof over their heads. That's all we said, come down and uh, there'll be food and you can sleep safely. And all these donations came in, food and gifts and sunglasses and certificates and Ihilani uh, gave all these quilts for the kids to sleep with which was a huge boon for them I mean they love those quilts because they could take them out and use them wherever they find a place yeah, to sleep yeah. and it was the most exciting thing for these kids and then uh, you know the next week when we wrote again they all wrote about how happy they were to have this experience so this year it's going to be larger at another um, location and we're, um, I just, to see these kids happy was such a gift last year. What's the agenda? I mean, how, how does the program un, un, un roll out? How does it work? Well, they start with pizza and food like that, and then they have a table full of gifts that they get to select for other people. And that was apparently the most popular activity last year. They're giving the gifts or receiving They are gifts? giving gifts. For the first time in their life, that's, they can they, go pick. That's gifts. very nice. A table full of gifts that they can give to other people and they get to pick something out and wrap it themselves. They present it to the other person too? Yes, yes. What, one of their colleagues as homeless kids. Or families. Or, or families, families too. Oh, family. yeah. Sometimes siblings. Younger, younger siblings and and perhaps even a parent that they feel really sorry for. Yeah, yeah. Which, which happens. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, okay, so then uh, they have a, uh, a program with the gifts. What happens then? Uh, the tick, 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 it's like 10 or 11 o'clock at night, I guess. <laughs> well, they How have does that power, work? okay. Yeah. They have Game Boy. Um, they just, and they find things to do. I mean, they're so excited to have this place to come together. And Father Christmas comes, Santa Claus comes, and... Uh, it's just, it's a delight. What, what makes it a delight for them? You know, you, you talk about a safe place to sleep, so there are, there's, you know, dark shadows around in the sense that there, there are threats if, you, if you're a kid and you sleep on the pavement. Um, uh, what, what would they worry about and how do you ameliorate that? Well, what happens often for these kids, and they tell me their stories, is that they will, you know, find a place to sleep and then they'll wake up and all their stuff is gone. So That's they, not the police either. No, That's it's other homeless, no. People, mm -hmm. yeah. other homeless people, you know, adults. Mm -hmm. So some of them, as we said earlier, give their bodies up to adult homeless so that they can sleep safely while the adults watch them. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah, it's, oh. uh, it's just... It's, it's just They're uh, so uh, vulnerable it's in every way. Oh. I mean, not only in having these bad acts visited on them, but in... in in carrying the scars of a very unpleasant experience for the rest of their lives, no? Yes, and that's one of the reasons that I, when I found out about this, because, I mean, I grew up here and there were no homeless, let alone homeless kids, and I found out about this place, I thought, well, I want to participate, and I thought, well, I could teach them writing to tell their stories, which is what they come in and do, 
And at first, you know, they're very leery of adults. It took months for them to see that I was going to be there for them, not for me. And then they came little by little, and they would write. And I'd say, you know, you can't write here. You put it down. Put it down on the page. Can they write? Yeah. I mean, they've had enough school to actually write. Yes, and I say, I don't care about spelling. I don't care about grammar. I care about you telling your story. Why don't you read us a piece? Um, okay, this, I'll just read a little bit about this one young man who once lived in an apartment, and now he's been on the streets for two years. And he wrote, it sucks to be in the rain. It sucks not to be able to escape people's constant looks. It sucks to have to sleep with one eye open, constantly surveying your surroundings because you know what is out there. It sucks not to be able to take a shower or use the restroom in private. It sucks not to have a space to do things I love to do, like dance, rap, sing, draw. It sucks not to have a quiet place to retreat to, to when the world gets hectic. It sucks not to have a roof, a space, a home. Beautiful. So informational. I mean, it teaches mm -hmm. you so much mm -hmm. about his life. I guess it's a he. Yeah. His life. And that. We're going to take some picture pictures now. Um, and let's see if you guys can give us a running discussion of what's on the screen, okay? Okay. What's that? That's our event in, that we had last April aboard the USS Missouri. Um, it was a 1940s theme, and that's Carla Hauser, who is t telling everyone about Yo House. Great. That's Cassandra Peterson, also known as Elvira, and she and Richard Chamberlain were the co-hosts for the event. And she flew over on her own dime to be a part of this to help the kids. Okay, this one? That's uh, Ben and Vicky Caetano. That looks Caetano. like Vicky Caetano, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and Ben, yeah. He had yeah. just won at the, silent, uh, the live auction uh, Richard's Rolex watch, the brand new watch that he donated, and Cassandra is presenting that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's more of the event. More of the event. Ah, that's... Um, uh, Fitzgerald, Susie and Dennis Fitzgerald, they're big supporters of Friends of Youth Outreach, and uh, in the background you have Vi Lu and right. and um, uh, that's great that you have such support from the community, mm -hmm. and it's obvious that they're down there. Those are our and, board members and there. Those are your board members, mm -hmm. including the uh, the captain. <laughs> Well, that's right. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's me. We that's just figured oh. that we uh -huh. would uh, dress up. It was a 40s themed event. You, you play a good captain, actually. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm uh -huh. impressed, Martin. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's okay, a, that's the Missouri, huh? Uh huh. That's, that's the Missouri. That's some of the guests enjoying it. People really had a good time on that. Uh huh. So, some more brass. Yeah, there's Richard Chamberlain on, on the left with Cassandra and myself. Okay, he plays an admiral, eh? Yes. <laughs> and, and other board members. Okay, some great pictures. Yeah. I love the Navy thing. Yes, <laughs> Gotta right. do that again. Mm -hmm. Well, our sock cop is going to be 50, so come with your t shirt rolled up with the cigarette pack and your socks. Oh, perfect. Uh -huh. So you follow the theme, whatever the yes. theme is. We want to make this fun for people to come. You know, there's so many events in this town. Almost every weekend there's something going on. But we want to make it fun because we believe so much in what we're doing. We really want to get a roof over the heads of these kids. They, they're good kids. Yeah. They just need a chance. Well, here's the question, though. You're reaching a certain number of kids. I guess we should find out how many. Uh, About 500 a year go through the U.S. 500 a year, but we know there are more than that. Yes. Oh, yes. I, I know, for example, downtown, there are a lot of kids that wander the streets at night here downtown. Not the same crowd, different crowd. Uh, and they get into all kinds of trouble. Mm -hmm. And they're exposed and vulnerable in so many ways. And so your work, actually, Martin and Jane, is just beginning. Um, there's a lot more out there, and they are, for the dark forces, they are the low-hanging fruit, is what it is. Yes, and the, the good thing about um, Holly Kipa is that they have the nighttime youth outreach program. They go out and find kids, bring them food, tell them about the Yo House, and they come in and they can get all these services. And it's, you know, they're, it's unbelievable to see some of these new kids come in and go, how long has this been here? Why yeah. didn't I know about yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's it's really an amazing program. We just we need more funds so that we can have a shelter based on there's a shelter in Portland, Oregon that Carla Hauser wants to create here, where you have um, different stages of need by these kids. You know, intermediate, 
immediate and then longer term um, so that we can help them get their GEDs and then they can get jobs and then they can support themselves. We're just not trying to find a place for them to sleep at night. We want these people, these youth to become you know, working members of our society and they want to. I mean, they're one wonderful writer wants to be a nurse and she had no idea that she had a chance to do that because she's homeless. I said, why not? You can, yeah. you, you can go to school. But that's the risk. They kind of write themselves off. Yes. yes. And you have to bring yes. them back. So we're going to come back right after this break, and we're going to talk about bringing them back. We're going to talk about what happens if you don't bring them back. Mm -hmm. And we're going to talk about fundraising. Don't forget. Jane, don't forget <laughs> the fundraising. <laughs> okay. We'll be right back. Okay. Hi. Aloha. My name is Chris Leatham, and I have host a show called The Economy and You. Uh, the show plays every Wednesday at noon. And on my show, I bring on guests who are interested or working in the technology space. And uh, so I'd like you to come and watch the show and learn with me about all the sort of exciting things that we're doing in Hawaii to build and grow our economy ecosystem. So I'd like to say aloha, and I look forward to seeing you on the show. Thank you. Okay, we have a great discussion going on Community Matters here on ThinkTech. We're calling it Youth Outreach, Finding a Room for Homeless Youth in Hawaii. Featuring our two guests, Martin Rabette, President of Youth Outreach, the Youth Outreach Board, and Jane Anderson, I, I misspoke before, um, of the Friends of the Youth Outreach, okay? Everybody agree with that so far? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let, let's talk about, um, you know, these kids and their delicate psyches, you know? Um, you need to do something for them or they, they will ultimately have terrible lives and be a burden and on themselves and on us and not productive members of society. So we're trying to make them productive, which we're trying in every way. You're not the only agency that's, you know, hitting hard at the homeless. Uh, we're trying in every way to um, minimize homelessness, ameliorate it when we find it, uh, and make, make them productive. So I'd just like to know, um, you know, what happens on Christmas? Because on Christmas, it's kind of special. The lights, the colors, the, the sound of music, dancing, food, all that happiness, sometimes it's real, not always, <laughs> but there it is, and to the, the person who perceives it, it's always real, and if you happen to be homeless on the street, it, it, there's a, it accentuates more than ordinarily, you know, at any other time of the year. Do you see that in working with these kids? December is a really tough month for yeah. these kids. Yeah. It's a really tough month because they see all this joy around them, like you said, and they're not a part of it. Yeah. And that's why having this party for them is absolutely wonderful. It doesn't take a party the last two weeks. It just takes a little party. Yeah, make them feel party. that, you know, there's mm -hmm. not such a big disparity. Yes, right. That they can enjoy themselves like other yes. people do. Yeah. Well, yeah. they also, they want to be seen. There's one wonderful writer in, in my class who constantly writes about how lonely he is out there because people look at him and don't they just dismiss him and he's brilliant and he's a good soul and he wants to be seen in this party this all these people coming together is saying you're worthy we all want to feel worthy but these kids especially need that because they didn't have an upbringing like many of us did yeah yeah that's a great loss and, and they don't have a, an identity a persona they don't have a place where they belong so you're offering them a place where they belong, and you're offering a, a chance to be part of the community. This is all about to make them, you know, working members of the community, productive members of the community. They got to be part of the community, <laughs> and I think that's you know baseline what you're offering them. So yes. what's so wonderful about Yo House? Sorry for jumping in, but these kids love Yo so much that when I have them write about goals, they say they all want to come back and work for Yo. Mm -hmm. They want to give back because you're That's a statement, so isn't much. it? It's isn't amazing. It? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, there's one girl here who wants to create an organization like you, but not just for old or young people, for everyone. They can come and... and I mean, That's, That's like, very creative. Yes. you got to give her credit for that. She's, she's amazing. Everybody needs you, Martin. Yeah. We all need you. <laughs> I need you. I mean, I went there because I wanted to give back in some way. I leave there so augmented that I, I, I feel so blessed to be a part of this. Yeah. Now, what happens on the, on the flip side of this? I mean, I, I, you must have thought about this. If you don't reach them, they don't come in, 
they don't take advantage or they don't know about, or for some reason they're not involved in your program and they're street waifs, um, disconnected with their family, disconnected with other homeless people, really, just kids. Wonder, out of something out of uh, uh, the, one of the Charles Dickens books, uh, Oliver Oliver oh, Twist. Mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. um, what happens to them? Just give me a sort of ghost of Christmas future kind of description. What happens to these kids if they don't have your help? You know the, how the homeless population is increasing here. Yes. They're going to be part of that. Yes. And they already are a part of it. Yes. But they're the one part that is not being addressed right now. The under under age 24 group is not being addressed yet. So that's, that surprises me because we have, yeah. we have hundred, literally hundreds of nonprofits out there trying to deal with homelessness. But no, nobody's addressing the 18 to 24 year olds. No one. So, th and this is a crucial stage of their development. And yes, it is. A lot of these kids are in such pain that they do drugs to numb the pain. And that's a one-way street. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we need to get to them desperately, desperately. Let, let's talk about money now, Jane. This is your okay. turn. You're the friends. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. Um, He's the friends too. Okay. He's the You're friend both friends. friends. Mm -hmm. But talk to me about how you raise money for this kind of organization. We've seen some photographs of some of the people who have supported yes. you, but yes. how does how does that work? Because it's you know it's a different. It's a different approach on different charitable organizations, different approach on different missions, different approach, you know, depending on how you handle it. How do you handle it? Well, first of all, we've only had our 501c3 since last summer, mm. but we got it in two months' time. Really? That's a record, isn't it? Isn't it? Yes. Yeah, you must right. have done something right. Yes. Well, we had a very good attorney who did all this work for us pro bono, mm -hmm. Steve Eggestall. Very nice. Yes. Shout yes. out to Steve. Yes, yeah. yes. Steve Eggestall. Yeah. Yes. He's on our board. He's on our good board. Work. And he did, he did this all for us and got it in two months' time. Um, and before that, we were sponsored by Lima Kukua, but we've only been in existence for a little over a year. Mm hmm and we are doing everything we can. We're trying, I mean, we had our big fundraiser above the USS Missouri, and we're having a sock hop at the well, stand. What is a Sheraton. sock hop? I'm, I'm too Do young you? to oh, know what on. that might be. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, having, we're trying to have different sort of venues. We're not having grand balls where people have to go out and spend a lot of money good, for, good a, for a gown or a tuxedo or yeah. whatever. They and don't really need that. It's inefficient, isn't it? Uh, well, those are <laughs> wonderful events and people enjoy them. But they need something different, and because we have such a different population that we're trying to take care of, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and we want to get people really engaged. So, in who's this. your target? Um, you know, group of possible funders. Um, anyone. Anyone. And everyone. everyone. Anyone and everyone. <laughs> well, you'd say that. Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> well, who have you been successful? I mean, don't no name names, but uh, what what groups have been successful? You know, in in raising money. I would probably say the same people who give. Mm -hmm. In general. In general. Yeah. There's just, there are people who normally give to, and, and people who have very big hearts. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, you just have to tell the story to people, and as soon as they hear the story about these kids, and the fact that they're caught in this terrible situation, they open their hearts and, and they open their checkbooks. That's something. And they're, they're ready to. Now, are, the, are these people who are wealthy people? Not class necessarily. People, or, not or are necessarily. they all across the board people? They're all across the board. All across the board. Do they have personal experience with homelessness and, and kids that have left home? Um, I think some of them do, but um, I actually have someone who cleans for me. And she came to me one day, and um, at the end of having worked very hard for four hours, and I was ready to give her her money, she said, no. And she said, I had to live on the beach myself when I was 18 years old. And she said, I want to give the money back to the kids. That's something, isn't it? Isn't that something? Yeah, that's great. Yes. You must have said something that touched her. Well, she saw she saw me collecting everything for the silent auction. She saw me working like I had a full time job, and she she caught the caught the whole thing. And yes, she brings me things all the time for the silent auction. So. Yes. Okay. Well, we have this uh, fundraiser coming. Let's talk about that for a minute. 
um, what is it? And um, I guess we know that it's April 8th. We have a flyer. We're going to show the flyer. It's a save the date flyer. Uh, talk about it, you guys. What, what, what do we do to ramp up to April 8th here? Well, it's we're, we're selling tables, and we we're looking for corporate sponsors, which um, since we're brand new, people are just finding out about us. But, you know, if we get the message out there that we're here to create a facility for these kids to sleep safely and to help them progress and become members of society, that's what the fundraiser is all about. We're going to have a band, we're going to give you socks, and we're going to dance the night away and help these kids. Right. Where is it? At the Stan Sheriff Center. Ah, I knew that. Yes, <laughs> yes. absolutely. Huh? Okay, that's big. You can you can have a lot of people at we the Stan Sheriff Center. We can have a lot Center. of people yeah. there. Oh, yeah, yes, yeah. yes. Easy parking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you expect that that you know? I mean, I guess based on experience, uh, are people do they give small amounts, medium amounts, large amounts? Do you have or all three? All three. Mm -hmm. All three. I know yes. someone who just gave us a check, and she has absolutely no money whatsoever, but she wants to participate in this. Well, you're you're really reaching them. It's interesting that you're filling a gap, um, and and that changes the paradigm around homelessness. You know, it's like, did we realize? Maybe we didn't that there was this age group that was being underserved or not served at all, and I, now we find that it's there, and you can and should and must and will serve it. I think you're absolutely right. We I didn't know about this, and I told my friends, and now I've got the, a financial planner and Kai Lua once a month delivering food to the O House. I've got a classmate from school here once a month delivers food because they need more meals delivered every week to these kids. And so more and more people are saying, well, I can bring a meal. Well, I can do this once a week. I can do this every two weeks. Or It's amazing how it's beginning to take some, some momentum. How will you track the outcomes? What I mean is, I mean, it's early for you to answer the question, how are these kids, how do your graduates do in life? I know what we'd like to have happen, but how, you know, do, do you have a sense of how you're going to track that and, and what you would expect when you do, say, five years later, uh, how these kids are going to be faring? Any thoughts on this? Right now, we see them 12 hours a week. We want to see them 24-7. And that's a function of money. That's a function of money. We need the money to get the house that's open 24 hours a day, seven days a week so that you can really make profound changes. And it, it's pretty hard with only 12 hours a week. They will do you, a great job. Will you follow them up from year to year? Will oh, you yes. include them again and again? Yes. Will you track their lives? Yes. Well, we want to do that. Yes. But prior to this, um, Carla Hauser says that sometimes the kids just leave because at 21 they age out of this facility. We're trying to get that extended to 24. But right now it's 21, and they age out and they disappear. But every now and then she'll get a letter saying how grateful they mm -hmm. were for her guidance and for Yo House. So they do come back. And I think there's one, one person there now was a Yo House um, attendee, and now she works there. So yes, to answer your question, there, we try and track those that we can, and some just disappear. Yeah, because if they had a good time, good enough to want to work for Yo House, um, that, that's a happy time in their lives. And if you can reinforce that going forward, or remind them about it going forward, you probably have a, a secondary benefit mm -hmm. you know, in their lives as mm -hmm. they get older. So I'm going to offer you guys, both of you, the opportunity to talk to the public. The public is a, a behind that red light camera right over there. And to give them a minute each, if you don't mind, um, and, uh, you know, what, what exactly, oh, I'm sorry, Vivian is the camera, it's Vivian over there, she's to the right. Um, <laughs> we got to do this correctly. So, would you tell the public what you would like them to know about Yo House, what would you like them to do uh, to assist in the, in the cause? Jane? I'd love to have assistance with uh, donations of meals. I'd love to have assistance in helping our board um, because we need we need help because we've got to um, we we need help to get a, a roof over these kids' heads, and we want to get the roof over their heads as soon as we possibly can. They need shelter 24 hours a day, seven days a week, not just on Christmas Eve, because this Christmas Eve means so much to these kids to have a night where they can uh, safely sleep. 
and we want to give them safe sleeping every single day. Martin? Friends of Youth Outreach was created to, to bring a roof over these kids' homes and their lives and to make them feel safe in the world and help them get a leg up where they wouldn't have one otherwise. They want to succeed. They have dreams of succeeding. And we need your support to, in, in any kind of way, whether it's a donation of clothing or meals or financial donations. And they, we have a fund at Hawaii Community Foundation um, set up to create um, an endowment that will pay for the new facility that we hope to create very soon. So anything you can do to help these kids because we want to stop the tide of homelessness in Hawaii. And if we start with the children, there'll be fewer adult homelessness in the future. Thank you, Martin. Martin Rabet, and also uh, Jane uh, Alexander. Anderson. Um, Anderson, <laughs> thank you. Uh, both of the friends of uh, Youth Outreach talking today about Youth Outreach finding a roof for homeless youth here in Hawaii. Thank you so much, and thank you for your good work, and thank you for identifying and dealing with this problem. Yes. Thank you. For thank you for us. thank you so much for having us here. Aloha.